This stream contains fast flashing images that may affect viewers who are susceptible to photosensitive epilepsy and other photosensitivities. Viewer discretion is advised. All right, let's go ahead and talk about what happened on this stage yesterday because we started off the day with the upset of the year when the 0-5 Furia took down 100 Thieves with back-to-back -back overtime dubs. And now we find ourselves here. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to VCT America Stage 2 because we've had some wild days so far here. We've gotten new comps. We've gotten oh, I love it. Uh, 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 new looks from teams, new rosters. I love you it. know, it, Mel I love got it. a championship belt. I love Wyatt it. loves it all. No, I love it all. This is the most fun watching Valorant has been, I think, in a while because of how crazy the meta is right now because no one knows what the meta is. All these changes, Haven back in the pool. Yep. Teams have no idea what to expect from each other, trying to just adapt on the fly. It's really awesome. I think this is one of the most fun times to watch in a game that's ever-changing, getting yep. updates, getting new things added. I couldn't agree more. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we saw yesterday, continue to dive further into that because, yeah, I mean, Bala, we truly did have a surprising result there with Furia and 100 Thieves. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think, you know, I mean, if you're a 100 Thieves fan, you're probably not that happy. But if you're anyone else, you're not that mad about that because <laughs> there, what, a, what an awesome game it was from Furia. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty disappointing from 100 Thieves, but Furia looked so good. I mean, it's like a whole new team. Fanji coming in. He didn't play phenomenally, but... The team was so good. Digison was insane. MW was doing he's crazy things on the like Neon. I think Digison's on the team. Damn. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I was he's back. He's been going. <laughs> I'm about to Haven say, you knowing that Stylish is here <laughs> right now. So. You know what I meant, man. Just, it's because we, we missed you, Digison. We saw Bustio's tweet with the image of the old team. That's, <laughs> That's what it was. That's what it was. Now he's got to retire, Bala. Uh, but yeah, and then, of course, we move over to Loud facing off against Evil Geniuses. And Emel, that was a matchup that both teams, they definitely desperately needed to win. Neither one can really sacrifice the loss there, but it was EG who came up clutch in the end. Yeah, I think everyone's preds are just out of the window. Like, two yeah. of the most, like, insane We upset. kicked Myrna because she yeah, was wrong two back. times. That's crazy. Yeah. 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 Wait, no. Yeah, that's the whole reason why you're here. I mean, yeah. you were you were on the first day, so, you know. I'm, yeah, we yeah. caught you for the NRG I, you know, pick. I thought but. I was going for, like, ooh, this is so, like, quirky and different. I'm going to guess NRG <laughs> win. And then, like, yesterday happens. It's like, yeah, okay. I'm like, not like other girls. Great. Oh, man. All right, guys, we'll look here. Stage two is all about a, a couple things here, but two most importantly. Firstly, it's about making playoffs, and it's about getting as many championship points as you possibly can. Here we are in the standings currently. So, if you, you know, remember, top six is going to be the thing that's most important here, Wyatt. And you see 100 Thieves in this position, but you also see an EG that's quickly starting to creep up, and 100 Thieves counting their lucky stars, they got themselves nine championship points. So they've got to be feeling like they should be sitting at four and two right now, but that upset from Furia, big implications. They're tied up with G2, the two best teams from America in Shanghai. They got both it's of them so with the deepest bizarre. runs, and they're in- it's so cursed. They're in, you know, that close predicament of not even just making the regional playoffs, which is crazy. I mean, you, you look at around the sixth place, and you see the records, and it's really like fourth to eighth yeah. is in contention yeah. to be the same record exactly. The bubble's very big yes. right now. <laughs> like yes. The bubble needs to get a and little And because of that game yesterday, I think it all explodes. Could be the same situation here again today. I very, think. very true. And speaking of today, we got ourselves a good old-fashioned blood feud, brother. We got Cloud9 <laughs> facing off against G2 Esports. Now, these two teams have met plenty of times before, but their last meeting was at the Stage 1 playoffs. G2 managed to get that upset, which, of course, led them to Shanghai to begin with here. I know you're a massive G2 fan. Oh, yeah. uh, so, you know, this certainly was a... I think, like, a lot of people were really big on Cloud9 because they had so many things going for them. But this G2 team, and they proved that they can be scrappy and they can fight for every inch that they're being given. Yeah, I mean, like, I feel like the whole story leading up to even into Shanghai was, like, resilience for them. Like, yeah. if you remember how, like, messy those lower finals were and how they came up into the upper finals yeah. uh, against 100 Thieves, ultimately losing, but seeing how resilient they were. Because I honestly had 100 Thieves being the better NA team to go to Shanghai, to be honest. And then to see G2 actually end up top three ahead of them, mm -hmm. it shows a lot of resilience. And I love watching G2 play because of how many win conditions they have. I never see them ultimately rely on, like, individual pop-offs, which are super entertaining. But as yeah. 
yeah. my GL, I do like to have some logic and like <laughs> some, some some sort of logical construction to rounds and winning. And I see that the most with G2. Yeah. yeah, yeah sure. A couple of days ago, we were talking about if America's sent their best teams. And I think a lot of people will be talking about the fact that obviously 100 Thieves, they lose to Fury yesterday, an 0-5 team. Did they just peak at the right time to make Shanghai? Exactly. Is that going to be a similar fate for G2 today? Will they have just peaked yeah. at the right time? And now with other teams like C9 getting that offseason practice, are they going to kind of go back down the rankings? Yeah, so many questions. So many questions. But, you know, there is one question I do want to ask you guys here. You guys miss Breeze? No. <laughs> Literally nobody. Why was that instant? How did nope. nobody was that? <laughs> I read the teleprompter. <laughs> Come on, the viewer can't know, man. I read, what do you mean? They oh, didn't think I'm smart. It's all, this is off the cuff. <laughs> oh, no. We're, we're just having a conversation. Completely unplanned. Oh, well, it's not like I'm just going to plan this throw for this video where people talk about Haven. Let's take a look. Oh, man, what are the chances? So, Haven's coming back. Haven being back is one of the best days of my life. Ah, Haven é muito boa. Eu gosto muito da Haven. Todo mundo gosta da Haven, né? Então, eu tô bem ansioso por jogar ela. Sempre gostei muito do mapa. Foi o mapa que a gente também foi campeão mundial. I'm happy that Haven's back, but I'm sad that Breeze is out. Yeah, I'm definitely excited Haven's back. Haven was like one of my favorite maps, so I'm actually really happy that it's back in the pool. Haven, Haven, I miss Haven so much. I remember my, my bridge play against Vitality where I was playing a 1v2, if I'm not mistaken. We were in overtime. It was a, a really long overtime. So when I won the clutch, she just like did my, my pose and stuff, and it was just amazing. Para mim foi uma mudança muito boa, é um mapa que eu gosto de jogar, é um mapa com três spike sides que é bem diferente do, do comum, então eu gosto, eu gosto de ter ele na rotação. You just have to be really smart to play the map. You know, people can always pivot to another site, you know, they can have a deep line somewhere, there's a lot of push strats. You have to be kind of ready and prepped for each individual team you play against. You see the way some teams like Fnatic play it really, really slow, thought out, and then you have some teams that are going to run at you. Haven didn't change anything on the map, so the only thing that changes is more like the meta, the comps. I definitely think that there can be some room for innovating on Haven. Also, with all the new ch uh, agent changes, I definitely think that there is some room to experiment with some compositions and maybe create a new meta. O sea, la verdad que también que haya vuelto después de un año es bueno cambiar un poco los aires, ver qué qué nuevo se puede hacer con los nuevos con los nuevos buff, eh, la neo nueva, el iso nuevo, la reina nueva. Entonces siento que hay algunas cosas que pueden llegar a cambiar el mapa y, y nada, eh, me gusta que haya vuelto y so I think it's safe to say that our players are happy for Haven and are glad Breeze is gone. Except for Ospos, poor guy. You know, what a rough <laughs> time. Tech player, though. Yeah, the... But wait, everyone's talking about Haven. We haven't even seen it this weekend yet, so hopefully we see it today. We saw it yeah. yesterday. Oh, no, we did. Yeah, yesterday. Did oh, yeah, oh, yeah with Fury. Yeah. But, but you're right. Everybody's batting oh, it right now, and yeah. it speaks to the amount of time that has come through. And when it was picked, we were confused as well because 100 Thieves just... Yeah, 100 yeah, Thieves well, who was were not able to process yeah. <laughs> They just, just no so time, strange. no new comp, nothing. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, that made no sense. And NRG didn't pick it? I can't. That, the, I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> they had time. They had yeah. time to practice it too, and that yeah. was always their map. But you know, absolute whatever. heartbreak. All right. Well, you know what? Today. Let's go ahead, though. Now that Wyatt broke the illusion of the teleprompter, <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and move on to today's matchup. Talk about G2 Esports. And once again, <laughs> this roster intact goes without saying because you know they literally just ended from Shanghai, uh, but they got that third place finish from there. And it, you know, in Shanghai, as you were saying, Mel, we were seeing that resiliency from this G2 lineup time and time again. Uh, you know, even though it did, Paula, feel like they kind of, they definitely fizzled out, like, toward the end there. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, that last lower bracket final yeah. against, against Heretics, you 100% say that. Given the fact that Heretics uh, lost to them twice. So you were thinking, yeah, they should be able to get this a little bit uh, deeper, but at that point, I mean, it's it's deep into the playoffs. This is the thing that you need to work your experience at. And it's definitely a good resurgence since, you know, their last international performance, at least for most of these players. So uh, I massive credit to them. So many games, they come back from massive yeah. losses in that first map, and then they just come back and look so good. But this is a bizarre series of events here, I would say, right? Because you know, would you argue, given the standings from Shanghai and G2 ending as the top America's team, would you say that G2 right now can make a case for being the best America's team? If you're being really straightforward and just looking at it on paper, yeah. you have to coming into this, right? Sure. But 
I, well, why doesn't I, it feel that way? I struggle to believe it's going to pan out that way. Well, because they are, to some extent, there's going to be an amount of fatigue. But more importantly than that, it's what I was talking about earlier with C9 actually having a chance to play Haven yeah, longer than they could, play is, with some of these new agents longer is, than they could. I mean, through our entirety of Shanghai, after the Swiss stage, underrated them. After playoffs, they get a couple wins, underrated them still. Like, we just keep doing it over and over and over. And yeah. at a certain point, we have to just give them the respect and include them in that conversation. Oh, I'm not, oh I'm not they're in the they're conversation, no okay. doubt. That's important. Yes, they're yeah. absolutely in the conversation. Sure. They have to be. I mean, are there other teams you would put up there with the them? Only one, especially kinda... after yesterday. Because like, energy is a team Furious. that I'm obviously really high on, and I thought they were going to come out the gates swinging with Neon, for example. There's so many patch changes, and that's like the biggest question mark is how G2 is going to adjust to the patch changes. Like, they have a new mm -hmm. duelist IC who's mostly been playing Gen Rays, and how is he going to perform in a Neon patch where... Is it even yeah. a neon patch? We don't even know yet. And that's my biggest question mark. All these changes, so it's hard to like concretely yes. put them in. <laughs> <laughs> After seeing Jogamo yesterday, Jogamo. yes. <laughs> it's a neon patch. Actually, though, glad you mentioned Icy because Vansili got an opportunity to speak with him earlier on today. Check it out. So Icy, you guys came out of a great run during Masters Shanghai. Talk to me a little bit about you know, your level of confidence going to stage two compared to your debut in stage one. I mean, I'm always confident, you know, this, this game is just another game to me. So we already beat them once, so I'm really not too worried. Sounds like it's going to be an easy game here, GB. Back to you. Well, thank you so much there, brother. Uh, but, you know, uh, I love the glasses, you know, just the, the what are the wraparounds or whatever, the yeah. hearts, you know, like you love to see. Look, Look at you and I said Snowboarding. Yeah. yeah, snowboarding glasses out here in hot California right now. Absolutely love it. And he was wearing them indoors. Absolute travesty. Uh, that being said, though, Icy, you know, glasses choice indoors aside, has definitely stepped up on a massive, massive way, Mel. Mm -hmm. We were seeing Icy put up some decent numbers and be the guy who the team needed in those moments in Shanghai. I mean, to be honest, and a lot of people were questioning him, even in the playoffs, even when G2 fall vital, everyone was thinking, like, when is this guy going to have, like, his pop-off match? And he did. He had, he had a, a few. huge, huge game. He had a huge uh, Shanghai performance. And I feel like if they're even just looking at it compared to, like, Cloud9, G2 kind of feels like the antithesis in the sense where Cloud9 obviously relies heavily on the Oxy Duelist. Heavily. No questions asked. And Ice in their hand is more of, like, a working in the systems duelist. I think Leaf even said it himself where they weren't looking for someone that's going to come and drop 30 every game. I mean, obviously that would have been great, but they're looking for someone <laughs> that will come into the system and play the best within their means, how they want to play the yeah. game. And I think he slots in perfectly. I, I do think that he can be that guy. We've seen a couple right. games like that, and I think the talk about him is still, to me, beaming with potential, right? They always talk about how this guy is in, in scrims. And I still don't think we've yeah. met that or seen that on the stage mm. yet, at least consistently, which is crazy, given the fact that I think this is one of the most consistent teams we have um, yeah, I, I think he has more to prove, even yeah. still. Yeah, I, I, look, I'm interested to see what G2, what IC and the rest of this team have cooking today. But, you know, Mel, I feel like it's a great opportunity for us to do a little telestrate. Wait a minute. Got to rebrand it. A Melistrator. Yeah, look at that. Oh, we got the horn back. All right, make your way over there. <laughs> do right. your thing. What you got for us today, Mel? Okay, I have a round from G2 versus Gen.G, and I have a round from G2 versus Cloud9. Okay. A double up. The doubling double up. up. Don't, the don't lose the stylus or else okay. Axe is going to kill you. Right. <laughs> Bear with me here. This is, a lot's going to happen in the first few seconds, so let me give you like a heads up what's going to happen. So first, I want to say we have Sovol. G2 has Sovol. They're on attack here, and the opposing KJ on Gen G does not have KJ. So that opens up the round for some more cool Sovol plays. So what you're going to see, Jonah P is going to throw a knife here, and it's going to land like this. And if this gets a scan, that's going to tell Trent, yo, ult the line. Ult back sight, I scan somebody. And at the same time, after that Jonah throws the knife, he's going to throw a flash here. And we're going to see Icy with the assistance of a blind go in over the top and just get someone pretty much for free. So let me play it out. A lot's going to happen in three seconds here. That's the knife. There's a Molly landing for CT. There's that shock dart to break the KJ Molly just in case like Icy takes any like random damage. Here's the updraft dash. Boom, there's a flash. Hits him. Doesn't matter though. Gets the kill. And at the same time as he gets this entry, backside player's dead. Perfect set play. Like you guys can easily take this for premier games. Like easily use this in your own matches. Um, but they're in a 5v3, and Genji actually ends up winning this round. Spoilers. Um, Texture gets in, uh, Leaf goes completely untraded. Trent's doing a good job, you're actually staying alive, but we see Munch can flash out and kill two, and then the round just kind of falls apart. Trent's in a really hard clutch, and that's what I'm kind of worried about going today. We see greatness from G2, a really cool set play, a lot of micro synergy, but I'm wondering, again, when they go against Oxy, when they won against G uh, C9 last time, 
It was very close on Lotus, and I'm a little worried how they're gonna deal with Oxy and his kind of like star player potential. Uh, to open the rounds here, I wanna show that, I wanna showcase Valen's calling. He called a little 80 fault fake with the smoke here. There was a haunt. Now they're gonna work towards C. On the flip side, I really like Vanity's call here. Sorry, both the IGLs start with a V. Vanity's call is actually to take A control and then push through because he knows how slow G2 has been playing. They don't ever really like commit to stuff off like the first two phases of the round. So we're gonna see it play out. And on top of that, look at Moose jump peeking here. He has KJ ult. This is all thought about in advance, either by Vanity or someone on the team called it. So he's actually gonna drop the KJ ult and it's gonna force them back into the players that are pushing through spawn. And look here, this call is gonna set up Oxy, their star player, and Zeppa in a perfect position to hold the flank. Here's Oxy, there's one. Now here's the thing, a player of like Oxy's caliber, he's gonna go for more and he's gonna get multiple. So not only just one, and you're thinking G2 like, okay, let's go trade this guy. There's another, there's another, there's another. And it just back to back to back. And that's the only thing I really wanna see here from G2 is keeping that consistency in their calling, but also matching and following through with the execution and shutting down Oxy, essentially. Yeah, that's gonna be their mission today. Great breakdown there, Mel. You feel free to come back and join us. <laughs> Mel is straight, you had to look at her handiwork one more time, you know. <laughs> uh, one time. But but that By is handiwork. actually an excellent breakdown and, and, and seeing the way that, you know, uh, especially considering that we are going to get this match today, G2, Cloud9, these two teams know each other very well. And you were seeing that in that Telestrator. We're seeing Vanity recognize these calls, try and counter these things that Valen wants to do. And Bala, I think that this is going to make for, uh, like, this is like our own personal little feud that's been Absolutely. happening here. It's been amazing. <laughs> no, this is great. And especially because these two are, are return. I mean, for, for Valen, it's the first time this year coming to the stage. Vanity has been in the past in this tier one level. And last year, they were playing against each other all year yeah. down in Challengers. So it's great to see it back on the big stage here. And uh, and it's actually turning into somewhat of a rivalry between these two. And that counter calling that you just saw in Mel's clip is, is definitely something that we have to pay attention to. Who has what tools and how are they calling around it? But now, considering the patch and where we are right now, that is going to throw Wyatt, I think, a real spanner into the works here because, man, who Absolutely. knows what the hell is even going to happen with some of these compositions that Cloud9 can bust out when you have Oxy on your team, for goodness sake. All of the IGLs are being tested right now in regards to how they adapt to comps and new things in the moment. We are not just seeing your standard meta stuff over and over where the responses are pretty drilled. It's about mm -hmm. in the moment making the correct decision. How do you react? Yeah, it's going to be really fascinating to see how this all breaks down today. Let's go ahead and hear from the IGL of Cloud9, Vanity, who's standing by with Vansilly. Vanity, you guys had a great start during the stage one here at the VCT Americas, but G2 were the team that eliminated your chances to make it to Master Shanghai. So how are you going to get your revenge today? Uh, just shoot them. Very simple as that. Just shoot them, GB. Uh, Vanity, I'm gonna punch you in the neck. Again, net. man. Okay. Poor Vans. I'm gonna like, see him. I'm gonna no, not Van Silly. I'm, no, oh, I okay. said poor Vans. Actually, I might just punch Van Silly. Just, <laughs> get a, just a double punch. Just go for it. He's trying his best to be, a, you know, an effective journalist. This <laughs> poor guy. One That's interview awesome. day. All right. Well, there you see the Cloud Nine lineup here. No changes here as well as expected. Because honestly, Mel, I mean, this C9 roster really—they they were cooking. They 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 had have you know, not just it shows in their results but also like just the team in general has really found a great stride here no I actually love this roster of this five and I think with Vanity's calling specifically sorry not to glaze I know I'm an IGL <laughs> yada, yada, yada. no but, really uh, Vanity I actually love his calling yeah. even back when they played uh, 100 Thieves in LCQ 2022 hold on bear with me here Whoa, I actually thought Vanity had some of the best calling he had, he had the best calling of all the teams at the event. Even when 100 Thieves won, I was watching the game, so I'm like, dude, Vanity's calling is sick here. And so I think, like, pairing that up with, like, this young duelist and Oxy yeah. and, like, all the support around him and the consistent anchor and, like, Moose especially. I almost use his first name. <laughs> yeah, we're tight <laughs> like that. But um, <laughs> I think it's actually such a cool roster, and I feel like I, I'm waiting to see C9 break through. Like, we see G2's story of, like, they win Ascension and they immediately are kind of going to international the same year. Yeah, it's, I feel like Vanity has always kind of been like hanging around in the middle, not yeah. yet finding I mean, that stride to hit into an end. Early on, he was one of the IGLs who brought multiple teams to international events. Right. But yeah. ever since then, it's been a kind of struggle. I mean, for C9 overall, Vanity wasn't on the team last year, but mm. last year was the same sort of thing. They failed when it came to playoffs. And yeah. here, this year, it's been the exact same story in well, both events. They're, yeah. they're in a good position regardless. So currently sitting in third in the overall standings, they got themselves five championship points, but their record five and one. And they went on one hell of a run. 
run uh, at the beginning of the stage here. So it is unfortunate that things kind of fizzled out for them in the playoffs because I feel like this team has so much more to give, especially at the international stage. That being said, though, they have a second playoff qualification, a qualification for stage two, really in the palm of their hands. They only need maybe just one win. Yeah. A couple would basically guarantee it because they are already five and one. So they are in prime position to lock up one of those playoff spots because of how good the regular season was for stage one. Yeah, it's certainly weird turn of events, right? You got a C9 team that has an excellent record. Yeah. Then you have a G2 team that has an excellent championship points as well. So they're all kind of serving two different masters in this situation. And, and they have the same opponents as well. They're in that tough situation. Yeah, they have tough. NRG, they have Sentinels, right. they have crew, right? It's beyond the game that they're playing today. And all those teams could absolutely turn up. They have the potential to go crazy during not the regular, just the regular spit, but also make run stores champions themselves. So it's it's not just guaranteed just because yeah. the record is that good, but they set themselves up for, I mean, success here. Yeah, well, let, and let's like actually reflect on what we We've seen from C9 in the past. I know we were talking about this quite a bit here, but uh, you know, again, it, it just boils down to the fact that this C9 team is on the cusp. They're 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 at these points where they can get over that hump. They just need to be able to do it when it matters most. How frustrating, Mel, is an IGL is it to you know like be in those situations where you're like, we just need one more round, or we just need a few more. Just give me a little bit more to work with here. Just being like so close, like the precipice. It actually it is tough to deal with. Uh, I'm those losses hurt the most. Like, I'm sure yeah. every time it has happened to them, they have just had to go through such like mental warfare and had to come out of it on the other side. And like props to Cloud9 because they did go through like a hell of a time last year when they flopped at playoffs, like right? And then they came back and they made playoffs again. So like it's possible like, they can do it. I'm just like also wondering what exactly they are missing to keep that next step forward. Yeah, well, we, we know they're not missing a star duelist <laughs> because Sorry. they happen to have that in Oxy, a guy who could just absolutely floor anyone that he goes up against. I mean, I think statistically speaking, best performing player, I believe, right? In, yeah, he's up there. In stage I mean, one. Up there with Ospina. Oh, yeah, I mean, look at this. He's got number ones across the board. <laughs> My goodness he's, de gracious. he's definitely up there with Ospos in terms of the, the yeah. best player in America, at least in terms of regular season performance, right? So for his rookie year, unbelievable. We need to continue to see him develop because he's actually shown flexibility. He's shown that he can hang with the top duelists. He's shown that he can up. He's shown that he can be that guy to entry. It's a whole package with Oxy. He's even pretty Pretty much the vibes guy for Cloud9 at this point. Very too. true. So it's it's very impressive to see a young player do what he's doing yeah. this year and do it at the level he's doing as well. <laughs> His reactions are just yeah, so just, visceral no, and so was, primal. No, but actually though, like you think of like top duels, how many of them are also vi merchant? Like you bring up a good point. This yeah. guy is yeah. screaming in comms. Like oh. if my guy is fragging out like 30 kills a game and then he's also like going super saiyan, yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm with this guy. I mean, <laughs> most, most of the duelists do the I do this every yeah, day. I, I'm, I, way I, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm way too cool. I'm way too chill. This is nothing to me. Yeah, they all want to act Basically, like they're not all the time. hyped up when I mean, they do I something see, crazy. I see like five minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally. Actually, very yeah. true. The, you know, the, the thing is, though, I, I think it's not just Oxy, though. I think Cloud9, like, uh, like make that a reality for That's almost true. everybody mm. there. So it's easy for him to be in that mind state. No, I, I could not agree more. You know what? Safe to say, I agree with you, Bala. You know, because that is going to give us a segue Whoa! into our upcoming segment. That's right, because it's on the telestrate, which, you know, teleprompter, damn you, Wyatt. Agree to disagree. <laughs> okay, so we're going to find out if we are all on the same page. And the good news is, you Sorry. lovely people at home, you can participate tambien. All right? We're going to say that a statement. As well. As well. Yes, thank you so much, Paul. Uh, <laughs> you're going to say a statement, and we are going to weigh in, and we have some comically oversized paper thumbs in order to... Uh, They're not that they're not, yeah, I don't really. I wish they were actually. They're, 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 they're not. <laughs> yeah, I actually wish it. Yeah, yeah you know, it's okay. Yeah, my hand the joke landed in rehearsal. <laughs> nah. <laughs> okay. All right. Here's your first statement. Yeah. Neon or ISO will be a must pick by the end of the stage. I feel like this is a. This is easy. This is yeah. This is an agree, but also it should have been one or the other. It should yes, have been ISO. exactly. If it wasn't for the fact yeah. that they're both there, yeah, I blame like, Kurt. Yes. That's fine. Hey, yes. Gotta, yeah. I mean you. <laughs> just, it just, just came my ear. Just came my ear. <laughs> we need a Kurt mic. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, by the end of the stage, yeah, surely, right? Surely someone will have cracked neon enough that everyone is trying yeah. to hop on the, the flow, right? Let's go ahead and change it up, though. Rather than neon, ISO. Do you think ISO will be must pick by the end of the stage? No. 
I don't know. No, is that a, is that a disagree? I, I've been very very underwhelmed by the ISO so far that we've had. Even despite Giacomo going what twenty three and two or something like yeah. that in first kills or first death because of that shield yesterday, I still very underwhelmed. I feel like a lot of times you're looking at um, people take engagements with the shield on and just get destroyed by people like Ospos, by people who are good at the game, and everybody's good at the game on this stage. So <laughs> I'm underwhelmed. I think for ISO to be more of a must pick, the synergies with other agents need to be. Yeah, it felt like ISO was there, there and then everything else. Was, was just happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. think that's kind of the key. Okay, and Twitch chat, I think, said yes to the statement, yeah. which I think, you know, honestly, if we're talking about, they were probably talking about Neon. Uh, all right, <laughs> well, now, here is another one. Let's go ahead and see what we got. Game sense is more important than game mechanics. Do you agree or disagree? I'm very Man. excited for the answer. I'm Ooh. very excited to see what Twitch in particular. Ooh. This one is... Uh, no. No. As a, it's an uh, FPS game. It's an FPS okay. game. I have a take. I'm gonna say agree. I think I think game sense. I think knowing, like having like an understanding of things is like very very important in a game like Valorant. Absolutely. And no, I agree. your take. My take is that maybe this is more so for ranked. Okay. But my take is that you don't even need game sense. Like games have developed in order to counter people's mechanics. Like the, the execs that we have and all the defaults we have are like based off of like how can we get this person not to have like a very in high engagement, uh, high favorable engagement against us. That and so crazy. that's what Bro, I think. I that, no, that was, you sold that, me, dog. No. You sold me. Put, I'm put, in. That, so, put that quote on a on a poster. And game a sense develops dude. to counter mechanics. Like damn, son. That, that is fire. No, I agree too. But I think why it. Me and you, we're mechanics people no. through and through. Yeah. Like, I was going to say the same thing as Mel, actually. Oh, okay. I was about to, I, I swear well, in that God. case, in that, I swear in that God. case, I swear in that God. case, let me change my answer. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and Twitch chat is all over the place. Do yes. they agree? Yes. Seems like they're they agree. Saying, yes. They're saying game sense is more important than game mechanics. Look, I, Did they out themselves? In, in terms the of ranked, I might actually, like, bro, I see some people who are so, like, I don't, how do you move, bro? What are you doing? <laughs> how are you hitting that shot, number one? Because it's complete luck. And why are you? <laughs> in that position, and I'm like, he must know something I don't know, because why? Yeah. Like, you're, you're, you're wide <laughs> on sofa by yourself, not using your dart. Like, what are you doing? That's amazing. Uh -huh. You seem like you have a hard time in your rank games, Bala. Oh, oh wow. Sometimes. Man, you can be... take that. I mean, no, I we mean, all just... do, don't we? Like, ranked is <laughs> a, a dude. I mean, I, mean I hear the trauma. <laughs> like, it's there. I mean, yeah, if there was the mental fortitude needed to be added to that list. Oh, absolutely. About more, important more important than everything. More important than mental fortitude. Mental Easy. fortitude. A good mental is more important important than everything else there. All right, next one. Let's see what we have. Sentinels will win stage two. I mean, yeah, my hot take yesterday is that they're going undefeated in this stage. So obviously, yes, oh, I'm, wow. I'm, that's easy thumbs up for me. Disagree. Hot take. <sighs> EG is going to win this stage. I could see it. Damn. I can see it so. You going there? Nah. Absolutely. That's that's the mm -hmm. hot take right there. We haven't even seen Crew play yet, though. Uh, but we always disrespect Crew, and I'm just going to continue. So. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's crazy. The thing is, like, it's so <laughs> real. Look, Crew has played fantastic, and I yeah, won't put them in that conversation. The but like, I just haven't seen it in playoffs yet. Maybe they go on. That's like, true. That's LCQ true. Run, but uh, oh. for for now, I just I don't think they're there yet. Yeah. Well, Whereas yeah. EG, I do. They're not there yet, but I'm looking at the cooking man and they're going crazy. I love it. What I love about this poll, this Twitch chat poll, is you'll see it be like yes for like a good chunk of time, and then out of nowhere, like a sea of no's. Uh -huh. Look, literally, it's happening right all, now. All the haters. I, there's just all the haters. All, all the haters, haters coming just in. Just flipped all the way back. Where you guys yes. agree. So you guys yeah. feel like they will. Oh, I agree. I think their win against energy was fantastic. Yeah. I love that they're using the deadlock uh, cipher comps. I think those are sick. Zekin said in the interview after that he was teasing he was going to play some of the other agents. I'm hoping to see some neon from him. Yeah. I'm, I'm totally on board, Sen, for stage two. I think they're back. Okay, you agree with this? Completely agree. No notes. Okay, no notes. <laughs> no notes. All right. Here is the last one. Something spicy, please. And Come it on. is Haven is the is best another one? map. I could get three. Yes. <laughs> it is the best map in the game, period. I will die on this hill. Even though I think a lot of people would be dead on the hill with you. Yeah, that hill. That hill will be <laughs> quite large. Yeah. You know, it's like a mountain, actually. <laughs> when he was even taken out to begin best. with. Wait, Bala. I don't know. You don't know? What, other options? what would be a better map than Haven? Uh, I really like Split, yeah. personally. Okay, I mean, I think that's, that's, that's one of the, like, judge more. Map. What about uh, Piazza? Uh, no, yeah, then, <laughs> that's the thing, man. <laughs> when a map becomes a judge that's map, then it's like, uh, but like, if you take out the judge, I think Split's the best, the best map. Let's just take out I'm the going, judge. I'm going, we should do so, that, number one. If you take out the judge, Split is the best map. 
but the judge is in the game, so. I mean, Haven can be a judge map too, so like, let's just regard, disregard that. I think ha Haven's my favorite pro play map uh, right now. Split has been there in the past, but I think I, just because Haven's been gone for so long, I'll go for, for that. All right. Split's, right. Been, split's been kind of stale. Okay, all right, it has been said. Okay, well, there you have it, folks. It's now time to jump into the game. We got one match today, all right? It's gonna be a great one because these two teams have faced off against each other so many times already, and each time they have, it has been exciting. It's Cloud9 facing off against G2 Esports. VCT Americas, as always, starts right now. Feeling some of the pressure, they swing into him. He gets three on the round. Has that support from Zephyr close range? No you till the half out. So that's the little Zarks in a pop off. First match versus Cloud9. We played them in playoffs and we eliminated them, so I think they're gonna be coming for revenge. Mm. I'm not gonna say anything, but it's a fluke. Just kidding, of course. RC getting ready. There's that first headshot there. The Odin is down from the pain shells to push him back, and he makes some noise to think that he's falling back while well, he has that support from Zephyr close range. No you till the half out. So this allows Oxy to pop off. I think there's probably the longest standing core in Valorant outside of Paper X. Uh, those guys have been playing together for, I don't even, like four years. Uh, they had a really good run in Shanghai. Excited to play them and hopefully get revenge for them locking us out of playoffs. It's Kind of like the same image we had during our guard days where we were stomping everyone and you know made our name for ourselves in, in stage one. A lot of teams in the league probably think we didn't deserve it. There's a big target on our back. After going to be through that flash, also gets that big phrase coming through. One player left. Jonah Peace finding some footing here. Incredible, incredible play throughout the series. The young team in G2. Riot Games Arena, it's time to end the week with the battle between two NA powerhouses. Let's make some noise for your first team. It's G2! Up for several summers, seeking how to step in commas. If you with us, buy the bundle. Say you should buy the bundle. Barely time to buy the bundle for this ton of errors rumble. Cause you know we titans in this game. Ain't no contest. If we take it to the game, turn a wild bet. We ain't fake it when I claim it's a wild threat. No rope, we've been a vet. Now check the mindset by the name of G2. Try to take over the world, how we come through. Called a newcomer, we've been up for several summers seeking how to step in commas. If you with us, buy the bundle. Say you should buy the bundle. Barely time to and buy And let's yeah. bring out their opponents. Put your heads high and let's go for Cloud This is the moment. Got a one on my opponent. Back then, they ain't notice me. Now they know it's me. I'm the closest. It's my time. Yeah, I put that on Bible. No excuses. Gotta get to the final. Take all of my idols and turn on the rivals. It's all another. Man, the trophy is vital. Game time, bet I'm coming in clutch. No hang time, man, they can't keep up. The gang's on the line, seconds on the time. Who can't fight? It's gotta be us. This has been a fun rivalry that's been developing between G2 Esports and Cloud9. C9 getting knocked out of the playoffs courtesy of G2. And G2 being the team with the deepest run of any America's team in Shanghai. And yet still, the respect not given to them. Feeling like they were robbed of that opportunity, C9. G2 didn't deserve it. You heard it in the interview beforehand what Oxy was saying. But it's part of the fact that Cloud9 had such a good regular season and G2 had a lackluster regular Very season. Very true. So that win that G2 got catapulted them to that result and I think that's why Cloud9 doubt them so much because they believe they could have beaten them in that situation and been them. 
going to Shanghai. Yeah, Mel, I know, you know, you, you've been in many rivalries in your career as well. Uh, how does it feel when you're not going... rivalries, bro. She's been <laughs> she's okay. popping them up. Very not true. Rivalries. It's very <laughs> true. But I'm just saying you have been. That being said, how, how do you how do you go into a game like this needing to knowing that you want to pick up this win, right? Just because you want it. OK, I'm thinking about it from what we just said from C9's perspective. They're kind of like not writing off G2, obviously joking partially that they flew quote unquote, but I think it might be kind of a miss there to like uh, on the approach from Cloud9. I feel like Cloud9 actually thrives when people doubt them. When they're the ones that are the underdogs and people constantly doubt them. What did we do during the entire regular season? Doubt them. And what did they do? They won most of their games. Yeah. And although they did flop in playoffs, as we keep saying, I feel like they're in a better position if they're the ones that are in the underdog position. So I feel like that's a bit of a bit of a miss from them. Yeah, yeah. Interesting situations that we find here between these two teams, Wyatt, but there's certainly going to be Oh, I, a lot of unique ideas on the server here, especially from the Cloud9 camp, given the time that they've had. We're headed on over to Ascent, where Cloud9 in Stage 1 really struggled. That was not a good map for them. They ban out Bind, which has been excellent for G2, so that makes sense. Let's see, though, if there's going to be anything new. Whoa. It looked like there was a Neon, and yeah, oh, there it is. There's but a it's going to be from the side of G2, the oh. team that has theoretically had less time to practice with it. Bro, I will pop off if this is like the icy <laughs> era, him on Neon. We find out he's a god, a movement god. I'm all in. I'm all in. Yeah, I mean, I need to figure out what the comp is around it, though. I think the synergies yep. are something that people aren't really working out this early in the season yet, and we'll get there as time goes on, but a sense an interesting one. Is it just a jet for a Neon type of replacement? And if mm. so, I'm not not sure if I love it that much. Does that go one to one? Do you feel like that transitions in well, Jet for Neon? Or? No, that's what I'm saying. I think you need to maybe have a breach or something else, which has been experimented on the past on this map. So we'll, we'll yeah. see. I'm not going to say I hate it, but I'm not necessarily. <laughs> and then by the, the end of it, bridge. all the agents get selected. Ball, I hate it. <laughs> 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 all right, and we got the Jet for C9 Oxy on his, you know, pretty much his the agent that he's just been popping off with. Hit that raise, no reason for them to change anything up, especially on a set. No, it looks That's like they're. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I mean, well, yeah, it looks like they're just headed to the standard stuff. Yeah. I, wait, hold on. Should, should I say Unlocks. it for you? No deadlock? No, no Cypher? Not, probably not. I know, which is disappointing. <laughs> yeah. I hope Moose at least plays Cypher. I love his gameplay so on that good. agent. He is so talented on it. And that's KO for Jonah P, so. Interesting. So no breach, like you said. I'm in the same boat as you, though, Bala. I feel like the breach pairing with Neon makes so much sense. And I feel like in a map that is so op-dominant, like Ascent, mm -hmm. I don't know how Neon's really going to fit into this. It feels like they're going to have to play something completely different than what we're used to. Yeah, I'm ready to see some deep pop flashes for that Neon, some tile split kind of play, just winding down mid, running fast. Yeah, this is going to be exciting. Let's go ahead and get this grudge match underway, shall we? And send it over to your casters for the call. It's Ren and Soy Chow. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, let's get to it. I mean, Cloudline versus G2, bound to be a banger, man. It's it's a weird one in terms of the expectations that the desk has kind of sure. been alluding to, right? Because in my mind, I think of G2, I think of them as being like one of the most consistent teams that we've got in America's. Yeah. And Cloud9 seem to be the ones that fluctuate the most. You know, they have high peaks, but they have low lows sometimes. Yeah. But the standings... Yeah, what are the standings? The standings are five and one for Cloud9 and three yeah. and three for G2. So yeah. it's, it's almost the opposite, right? It's painting a different picture for us. But uh, we'll see how this plays out. Cloud9 are an interesting team. They can definitely play up to a very high peak. I'm interested to see what G2 have been cooking. Like the desk was saying, not very much time, but I think we're going to see a lot of KO flashes yeah, through the neon wall. And so that's what I'm paying attention to here. No wall being bought, though, on this pistol round strategy. So just looking to try to send it. And poor Rooney on the other side. Yeah, isolated, pretty alone here. It's only going to have the marketplace to really help him out here. And there's the reveal onto Oxy. Good down this one, though. Yeah, that's going to put a pause into G2. Yeah, they haven't used a huge amount of their utility, though. It's still Fragment Grenade, two flashes, Paranoia. You know, they just used Recon and, what, yeah. like a slide, basically? So, causing C9 to panic just a little at the start there has given them that utility advantage. And G2, so happy to slow it down. In the middle of rounds, at the start of rounds, at the end of rounds, any time, slow it down. They are definitely one of our you know, most slow-paced teams. We I like to refer to that as cerebral bread. Cerebral, sure. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, uh, like when the travel agent sells you a cozy apartment to, mm -hmm. to go and stay in. Yeah, some people would also call it quite slow in terms of the gameplay, but this is anything but it. Quite explosive straight through, and now essentially the round wrapped up. Only two players left standing. Leaf got main control. 
It's up to Moose and Rooney to try and retake this one from heaven, but a pistol round is essentially wrapped. It's going to take a miracle. Dart, nowhere near to coming back onto online. And the postman set up. You can expect discipline in spades from this G2 team. As soon as one player takes a contact, it's heroics from Moose, but nothing past that point. Really That's a pistol that. round earned for G2. Showcasing there in just the first round all of the strengths that G2 have used to become the best performing America's team of recent times, specifically with that run through Shanghai. Only lost to the two teams that were in the final. Oh. Happy to slow things down, make it very difficult for Cloud9 to figure out where they were going. The execute when it actually comes through is very nice with good utility and then such discipline in post plans to make sure they convert their advantages. It's, it's picture perfect. It's not necessarily super flashy. You're gonna get that from Oxy on the other side of things as he tries to battle through. But G2 have got a lot of good qualities. They certainly do. That's another thing that we're going to be keeping an eye on, I think, over the course of this series is you know, the stylistic differences. We're in a new patch and meta. It's shifted a lot of things in different directions. Duelists are coming more into focus. Is it more individualistic? Who really knows? But it could be prime for Oxy to really do some work Not on this round, necessarily, unless he gets lucky with the right click. Slides that dash active, but yeah. it's going to be fading away. Yeah, brutal, actually. Thought that that was going to be the timing that G2 chose. And they're happy to go back over towards where Leaf is playing. Uh, there is an opportunity for Oxy and Vanity to go for a peek, but it, it's really just all classics on the other side. C9 would have to get very lucky with the oh, weed on oh, exactly wow. where G2 are ending. And yeah, four players caught in that. You're just going to be sending it to B. Swamp G2 should want nothing to do with it. 40 seconds left. I think these are the only moments where G2 look like they're seriously can be caught in trouble is when they allow the time to tick down and they're heading into a stack. But that's not the case here, obviously. They know from that zero point that most of C9 were on the other side. But, you know, sometimes the time can work against them when Valen likes to call these oh, yeah. slow-paced pauses in the round. And that's where Vanity's going to be trying to get the edge, is figuring out, can you get the read on where Valen's trying to end uh, before G2 are set up to go for it? That's going to be a very standard... Quite slow ending to this round as well. Yeah, yes. Cloud9 just going to be waiting this one out for the spike. See if his kills get hunted. I mean, Trent's actually only three away from getting his ult online as well, so they're definitely going to try and fight for this. Yeah, could press forwards. And grab the two remaining kills. Trent's going to go for it. Leaf steals the final one. All right, well, didn't need that Hunter's Fury online anyway. <laughs> All good. And headed into a bonus, I would imagine that G2 are going to have some set strat here. Mel broke one down. Beautiful ascent round that we saw earlier. Yeah. You can't do the same thing again because that involved an updraft dash onto site. But you can do something similar. There are neon walls that you can throw through the windows in B main. Neon wall exec into A is very strong as well. And you never really know where the neon's going to pop out with a KO flash. So I'm expecting that G2 will have a lot of those kind of setups ready to go. But as is always the case with Valen, he likes to do a little bit of defaulting before he picks an execute. Oh, and this is fast, actually. Yeah, Ice is already straight up through into the connector, but he stuns himself up and flashed up. It's the underhanded just from Zeppa. Nanoswarm is going to go flying forwards just to the backside of Jenny, but it's a stalwart defense currently by Cloud9, and they are dominating every single position. Good cleanup from C9, but the timing on that didn't quite work for G2 at all. Icy's going alone from tiles, throws the wall so he can't get punished through mid, which is where Oxy was looking to try to take the fight. But he's pinching the players over by tree way before the A main players are ready. You know, Zephyr's not under pressure there from anybody trying to get into sight. The execute is not really coming. If you're gonna run a, a strat like that where everything feels super heavy from the neon through tree, it's gotta play your players in from A main. A little bit disjointed, but another buy round on either side. It was just a bonus for G2. They're looking to try to punish Rooney there. Recon up top, seeing if they can counter spam. There was a lot more Odin usage towards the end of stage one in America's, the kind of playoffs and take flight. The teams when they went over to Shanghai. Makes it more difficult to go and take that B main control. Yeah. Again, it's gonna be cautious from G2. As always, 
And they're doing a great job with their util of pushing Oxy back. That was one of the things that they did a great job of the last time that these two teams Just met. punishing him as well. Yeah. He still actually found a lot of value on defense. He had a over one rating on defense. Oh. But on the attack side, when Oxy was trying to entry, he was held in check heavily. Oh, so he's going to be missing a dash for this one, but he can hear all of these bodies in front of him with the bunny hop in. I see. Just barely going down. The trade was online, and that was the point of it. Moose is tucked. Very committed into this position again. It's a little bit labored. A little bit of messy. Still towards the back of the side. It's Rooney. Left to anchor now. Players trying to get themselves in. A supportive flash Remaining. from long distance. That's Zeppa helping him out. Util good enough, but it's, again, just even exchanges almost. Trent now left in this 1v2. Plant. Has to commit it. Only 13 seconds left. No players pushing his position just yet. Doesn't really have any util either. And he's gonna try and at least win out this fight, but to 1v2 and ran down and chased down by the bullets. Side by side, Cloud9 and clean that one up, bringing it two to two. Had to pick a side there to go to try to fight in the 1v2, really. It was either that or just cowering back sight and trying to pick them off. Tries to take a time in, hoping that Vanity and Zephyr are gonna be scaling lane at that point in time, but alas, not the case. So G2. Given up two there. And this fake over towards Tree didn't really pull too many people away. One of the things that you could find big value out of with the Neon, because you can fake on one part of the map and then very quickly be on the other. We want the round, baby. That's all that matters. Oh, no, Yo, what, skin, what skin do you want? No, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just talking about skins going into it. Yeah, I mean that. Revealing area. Just captures the personality, I think, of Cloud9 pretty, <laughs> pretty adequately. Yeah, it really does. So C9 are doing a lot of flood defending here. That's another thing to keep an eye on. The main way that they're trying to get back into sites is not by running any set retake. <sighs> Rough time in there, actually, from Oxy. I think he had that one dead to rights if he'd stayed on the angle. Yeah. But C9 have now gotten. Operator online, Odin online, economy still has a buffer on most of the people, Rooney and Zephyr with like 5k in the economy. Yeah. Things are looking great here for the defenders. G2, big hill to get back up. Exactly. With Oxy having this operator as well, good time to highlight that. It's something that Mel mentioned, when you're opting in for the Neon, experimentation on Ascent, it's very op heavy map. A lot of defensive protocols and setups rely on your jet getting value with that one. You can't really, I mean, you can put a, an op in the Neon's hands, but Hang on, bow. This is Moose going to be under a tremendous amount of pressure, but can he really stand up to the challenge? Yes, he can. Spike down. Weaponry not ideal. Off of G2. Still going to be jumping her way into the side, blinded up. The su flashes, supportive util. Not quite working out in their favor. Jonah P cleaned up. Two players left. Tethered into this site position now, and Lee's going to have to go walk past, really, and make some magic happen. Remember, Trent pushed previously. So C9 just waiting. Trying to play cautious. I'm spam. Paranoia is good. It's fantastic, in fact. Catches on to almost everybody. Valin is left now. 1v3. Only the one, and there's that Odin. So Putting good. in the work. <laughs> Just turns the wall to paper. C9, the defensive protocol over towards B, when Moose is just in back sight alone. Yeah. You know, he's trying to be the anchor there that the rest can flood defend off the back off. Did eventually end up getting overwhelmed. Maybe with rifles online, that's something that G2 can exploit. But there's constant flashes coming over the top from Zephyr. From what a util, man, is yeah. it's top notch right now. But I think Valen's smart enough to read into the way that G2 apply. Uh, sorry, the way that Cloud9 are playing. You know, if you run a B exec and then you try to actually push spawn on that timing as Zephyr would be trying to flash. Yeah. There's there's some ways that you can mix things up. But I think this is just going to be a big ult round. You know, it might even be the same protocol that Mel was highlighting. Zero point towards the back and see if Trent can get a kill with it. We'll see. Plenty available to them just to slide from IC. Gets himself into it. Oh, okay. Wow, that's so bold from our Oxy. Walks all the way up cat. That had to be a ridiculous shot, I think, just as the smoke was blooming. Still, this lockdown is going to be placed down towards the feet. Got to be respected now by Cloud9. Also, I believe, cancelled there by Valen. He was trying to get himself into the side. Zephyr not being cleared off this angle. G2 really struggling to even find themselves a foothold to even get past the initial choke point. All the spam, I think, that was just being provided from the Odins. Good utility now, though, to push back any of those defenders should allow G2 access to the site. Barely in, struggling, waiting for the smokes to come back up, at least one of them to block it, but now they can finally 
move forwards. Cloud9, locked down of their own being used. Doesn't actually cover the whole section of the site, but his post plan is dire right now from G2. Hunter's Fury out for a spawn to divide him a bit of space and time to work with. Here's a kill. Potentially a second tag, definitely softening up a lot of these players here. Now G2 will have to pave their way out of it. And how can you do it? Spam from all these angles again. The post plant is not ideal. Corralled, collected into the corner. Not too much more you can play for, but a shot missed and whiffed there from Icy. A follow up just not coming through from Zephyr. It's a 2v2. Damage being done, but he just can't find these kills. These last few players, and it's left up to Rooney. Just with the Odin. Has to get out of secondary, but too slow of it, man. Felt like C9 should have been able to get into that one. Yeah. It's a nice reactive ultimate from Trent. But when all things settled, when all of the ults were used, the C9 retake did not have to worry about B main. They knew that all of the players were forwards. They already had kind of the picks and the players shoved into spots. Look, they're in a 4v3 at this point in the round. Trade comes out and Icy on super weak health manages to pick up two in a very pressured position. Doing a good job. Those are the kind of spots actually where I would normally expect C9 to have an advantage. This is, is this? the A split strat. This is what Icy did last time when they went for that full A crunch. But last time Icy just ran straight in, stunned, and ended up going in a little too early. This time it's part of a fake, a default for a bit of mid control. Think about that wall. It actually lets you get really close to Oxy if he was orping. Yeah. You should cover as well from any flashes or darts. There is some mid aggression on display by Cloud9. Oxy's actually looking for a fight through B main. He's got that blade storm popped. And Leaf, it's now his job to try to. Oh, they were thinking about going and taking some B main control, they but they were. Opted not to go into it. Someone cancelled the call. So again, it's a cautious tale here by G2. Nothing too eager at the beginning. Yeah, and the fact that they're not taking B main control, I think, indicates this is almost certainly ending A. And that's that's what Rooney's thinking oh. right now. This, I think it's just a fake, though. Okay. Uh, and look, Oxy's ready. He knows it's a fake. Ah, and it's going to be catching the spike, potentially, with this kill. Yep, dropped out. This oh, is the nightmare oh. scenario. But Oxy... Sky, it's known for the game sense. Well, not quite a game sense, but a mechanical ability. Still, this time, he has single-handedly won them this, has surely. He? I mean, it's 50. Yeah, he must have done. There's no way that they seconds. can win this round. They have to recover the spike, left. and there's absolutely no chance of it, man. Oxy, he can just play his timing. Look at this guy. Working him in the neutral. Four on it. Can <laughs> claim the ace. And Rooney, he just wins the round by sitting back in pizza. Yeah, that's <laughs> been done there. Yeah, good work. The time very much going against G2. They actually got a lot of value out of the push through into A. They just didn't have the spike, as you mentioned. Yeah. I think that's a massive oversight, though, from G2. Uh, you know that you don't have B main control. That's Leaf was going in that direction. They didn't want to take the risk of challenging Oxy, which, fair enough, this guy's a beast. But as soon as the turret goes down over towards B main, you have to anticipate that even if he's not pushing out to get kills, he's pushing out to get <laughs> info and knows that it's an A split. These are the kind of things that Valen should be able to recognize. Here's that wall, wall again. Yeah, same strategy, just trying to deny this one. Judge in play from Vanity. Oxy, operator! He nails a shot. Easy as. Not too much danger left into this round, really, for G2 to work with. And Oxy, of course, taking liberties. Slow walk up mid. You can hear the footsteps. Near Valen. Simply no need to do this in a yeah, 5v2, but, yeah. uh, you know, Oxy's going to do what Oxy's going to do. He's getting good information for the team, but I think they had a pretty good understanding that everyone was around there anyway. <laughs> Vanity cleans up with three. That's so silly. I don't think Vanity meant to miss the one way in A main. Maybe he's just uh, giga brain there and deliberately threw the smoke on the floor so that he gets spam into. <laughs> but. Either way, C9 pretty easily wrap up another anti-eco. Uh, and G2's economy has been a massive problem for them in this attack half. Broadly speaking, because they lost rounds three and four. They gave away the bonus without really doing too much damage. And then lost very pivotal rifle rounds. Yeah. So plenty of these rounds that C9 have got online have been simple for them because they have big rifle advantages. 
And the Cloud9 economy pretty much hasn't been touched this entire time. They're going to be able to buy out for the rest of the half, even if they were losing, I would imagine. Yeah, it's flourishing at this point, forcing the timeout from G2. Yeah, and I think really the big issue here is Oxy. He's, he's running around the map. He's finding, even if he's not finding all of the kills, he's still finding opportunities to disrespect the presence that G2 puts around the map. Mm -hmm. A lot of people might be scared to take that extra peek. Not Oxy. And when he does take the extra peek, he's either going to take a duel or he's going to realize there's no one there. And that gives his IGL more information about where Valin is actually trying to end. So you get huge amounts of value if you have the confidence to just take those more aggressive positions. And for G2, they've got to punish that. No two ways around it. Now, I see no weapon should indicate that this is a fast piece. Some kind of B-split through market, perhaps? Yeah, surely with the ult in his back pocket. We'll see. Cloud9 making those adjustments, though. Ox is going to be hopping straight through. Odin to set him up and support him onto that line of side angle. Does he anticipate this, though? Leaf is going to be tucked into that corner. They're trying to bait Oxy into over pushing. They really are. Breast can't find it. I see. Bit of a fake in terms of the presence, what they're going for here. Trying to see if they can pull players over towards A, but the rest of them just get into the B site. It's kind of a nice fake there, actually. It accomplishes what they wanted, but I see if Jonah P didn't get anything on the other side. They sold it, but they would have been hoping for at least a kill. And a swarm, they're being pushed back. This is going to be a very damage. difficult, very difficult post plan. Yeah, it really is. They don't have B main control. G2 going to be struggling with this one. Cloud9. Numbers advantage, health advantage. Potentially win this just by spamming. It's G2 to really need to get proactive. There's one, at least, for their troubles. Leaf. Just finds it, backs away, Dart reveals it, surely spam on board again, swing. he covers the angle, the swing is immaculate! Rooney, how does it come down to this? Low enough, Dart just needs to be dodged and avoided. Shot Dart's flying forwards, but already with the time ticking, he realizes it. Job's done, it's finished. No more chances into this one. Can play for the exits though, he knows that money is a potential problem, but... Do they keep them? The bullet tag, potentially slowing them down. No, everybody gets away with a rifle, so G2. Honestly, bailing themselves out of that spot, that was a tricky scenario. What teamwork, though. A fantastic swing timing from Leaf. They couldn't break the recon dart, and Valen was dead to right, stuck behind those boxes. Leaf swings, knowing that somebody's going to get aggressive. Perfect teamwork there. That's done. And all of this built off the back of a really nice call from Valen. To go for what looks like a very fast A split, to bait out an aggressive play from Oxy. Oxy even gets tagged with the very end of Jonah P's Null Command. And they pick up the kill on the aggressive star opper from C9. Oxy now might be conditioned to take fewer risks, but we're 10 seconds in and he's pushing on to B main, so yeah. there you go. We just did commit as well. The Nana Swarm breaks the turret, so Oxy could take a peek if he wanted to. Turret won't catch his contact. Does need to worry about a multitude of angles. You can see Leaf is just ADS'd up, trying to stay active. Locking in just in case, but pull back the turret, so he got to at least back online nice and early. It's going to be covering that B possibility. And a setup now looking like leaning over towards A from G2. They've got the spike in that position. <laughs> Both teams so aware of all the yeah. little meta nuances between the fight over the B main angles. But as you said, it looks like it's heading over towards A here. Rooney, I wonder whether he just rips ult. He's, he's in a fairly nice spot to try to ult the choke point. Paranoia wall. Dart. Abundance of utility going to be used to try and take this one. Valen even with the commit till, but the Dart not accounted for. That was across the map. Rooney does it. Let it rip now with a Hunter's Fury. Couple of tags. No damage though. Surely the kills. The Zepa capitalizing off the chaos. Pushing the advantage entirely. And Leafs alone. Once more in his 1v3. With no fight. time to work with a tap. Ten See if he gets an easy left. fight. Not given. Cloud9. They know that they just have to play the slightest amount of discipline and already the round's won. No more time for the plan. And Oxy knows it. <laughs> Risks the op. Moose could have got the pick up. But he ends it in style. That's another C9 flood defend that's really nicely coordinated. Their utility's perfect. The paranoia catches onto people. That's all sent off the back of this overall. Recon from Rooney finds value. The ult finds value. You know, all of these G2 players are so distracted 
getting caught by spam and the ult. Really well defended. I think both teams are playing a good game so far. And four would be considered fairly standard for the attack side. I mean, considering how hard it's been for G2. Yeah. It's not great when you've won pistol, of course, only getting four, but it'll do at a pinch. And obviously, he will not be denied this angle. Look at this guy. Oh, where you're peeking at again. Immediately with a shorty out, anticipating there could be that punish. You should run. Another swing. Locked down. Now I'm going to be used. Perched up as well. Up onto the wall, just in case. There's some util flying forward to deny that one. Oxy, you're really getting ahead of yourself here, son. Surely the updraft to stay around the corner. And the pincer comes through eventually, but Sephiroth wants more there to cover. Round to the side, loads of damage done. Softened up Valen, leaving it to a 2v4 for G2. How are you going to dig yourself out of this one? Really not. Vanity, make sure he holds this one. The dart! Didn't quite tie him, but still distracted him. Exactly. That's all it took. Valen. Is that going to be enough? Still not gone online in the hands of Trent, but he's actually managed to find that off. Salvaged it. In the midst of it, closes the door in their faces. Now potentially a safe plan, but no, they want to push forwards. Moose takes the fight straight to the brain. One bullet's all it takes. Valen, he's just looking for another one, but already revealing that spot and position. Seven rounds now for Cloud9. And again, showing that these protocols Last look lovely on the defense the side. Switch. Notice how it's somebody else that breaks the door to allow Moose through. He's not wasting his own bullets and having to reload. He's got a teammate there that does it for him, allows him to swing through very quickly. But that was a bit of an eco round for G2. And so all the focus is going to be on whether this is 8-4 or 7-5 at the half. It makes a big difference on Ascent. And I think G2 can go for more pump fakes. When you see that C9 are flood defending like this, try to bait the flood out and punish it rather than committing fully to the site. I think that's what I'd like to see Valen call in this final round. This time, oh man, what a shot. Yeah, what a shot, Oxy. Quick with the reactions to shut that one down. With Icy missing now, G2 might struggle to get the initiation factor going forward and warbang angles. This is just a fundamental understanding of how this map is being played. Constantly punishing the twists and turns of G2, man. And this time C9 not going for the flood. Happy just to be no in the 5v3. That's a great punish off the drone. Yeah, knowing that spot and potential positioning. Trent, any sort of damage done? Not quite, not no really. kills, yeah. Still, Leaf is holding it down towards the main angle. He's the one who really has to do something about this. Already the Nate being committed up onto lane. Zephyr's in his face, just with the rifle. Leaf with a counter spam in play. He knows he needs to do it for Trent to at least allow him to stay alive, but it's not possible. Toppled and falls already, and the round crumbles. Just like that, up to eight now for Cloud9. So we finish this first half of Ascent. 8-4 finish, nothing to scoff at. No, solid for both teams, to be Switching honest. G2 sides. would have wanted a lot more, but C9's defense looked really good. They had the Op and the Odin online the entire time, with Oxy and Rooney providing big value from both of those guns, and great protocols on when to flood, when to set retake, and how to support each other. G2, They'll be content, not happy, but content with four. But two of those came off the back of the pistol, so they really need both to have any chance of winning Ascent, I think. Right now, it's Cloud9 just feeling really empowered, I think, leading the charge. And earlier, we heard from Zeppa about his thoughts on Cloud9's performance all about Stage 1. Stage 1... I mean, it went as good as you can. I guess we went 5-1, and one. could have gone 6-0. and oh. Um... It definitely happened again where uh, we didn't perform in playoffs, but um, you know, it, it kind of sucks because like the first time, like last season, um, the excuse was inexperience. Uh, we got so close, didn't qualify. Coming into this season with like two new players, yeah, Rooney came back, um, plus Moose. So it's like, we kind of had to start from scratch, and but we played great in the regular seasons and the concern was like, you know, like, hopefully we can do it through playoffs, it didn't happen. But, hopefully it happens now, so. C9 are an unusual team. Their record is so good from the regular season, five and one, but they did flop in playoffs. They've, they've almost got themselves into stage two playoffs. They only need another win or two, but they've got to perform when it matters. 
Their match record over the course of the year is six and four, fairly positive, but they have a negative map win rate right. over the course of the year, despite being five and one. And their round differential is negative three in the year in Americas. Yeah, that's taken into account the playoffs, kickoff, playoffs, everything, and, kickoff. and the regular season. And yeah, so the regular season where maybe you could argue the stakes are a little lower and they were only playing against winless teams, they, or rather, they only won against winless teams. They, you know, when the stakes were lower like that, C9 were finding good opportunities to get wins on the board and did a great job at it. But then in a more like tournament format or performing in playoffs, they couldn't quite get it together. And it slipped away from them. Whereas G2, complete opposite. I mean, we don't think of their record as being particularly good. They're a three and three and three team, I think it is, throughout the regular season. But they're plus 38 round differential in America. Yeah, they've stepped like, up to the challenge. Way better in terms of how they perform from a round to round basis. It just isn't reflected in their stage one results. And for now, this is still super even. Yeah. Could be anyone's game just ending on this pistol round if that's forwards. Up and out of it, man. Just trying to weave your way past this. I see. Final bullet will do that. A. It's three piece. Yes, as it comes. Straight through the choke point. Everybody falls. That is so over in the blink of an eye. And a necessary pistol round for G2 to have yeah. some good hope here because their rifle rounds were not really working. I think we're going to see big value out of the stun on defense. I think you're already seeing that from Icy there. But. It does come at the cost of not really having the best agent for the operator. And I think the the number one thing that people associate with Ascent is having that jet up online. Yeah. And being able to cover mid with it and apply pressure and push out B main and that kind of thing. C9 looking to go for a very similar idea straight again. Hacked only, up at a knife, though. Only classics, no plant down, no real, you know, not a huge amount of kills. So they're not going for that by Oxy or Guardian strat. Keep it safe. Of that. Yeah, we did see a lot of it. Just trying to put all your resources and potential into Oxy. And why not? He's been a phenomenal player. And I think over the course of this year, has continued to get better as well. It's not necessarily that his fragging has gotten better but he, he makes fewer mistakes than he did yeah, his game sense is sharpened i think it definitely has with yeah. more more scrim time more match time he's not throwing his life away as much and he's still getting really big value in rounds of course when you have a player as aggressive as oxy there's always going to be some overheating involved it, it's just part of the play style but you want to try to minimize it as much as possible and get Get the, the big powerful round still out of him, and I think they've done a good job of that. I think Vanity is a good caller at getting the most out of a player like him. I mean, speaking of his calling as well, this is an eco round, he's not throwing it away. Just trying to spot out the defensive util, break a lot of it. Seconds left. Jonas Tends over towards A, yeah, hard middle. Here's the rebound though, with the flash. Bounding across the wall, stun, the connection. Vanity does pinch them just from the side, shot to the temple. Takes him out, 16 seconds left now. Gotta get themselves into the site, and there is one anchoring player, it's Valin. Tucked down towards Dice. Only a few left. seconds remaining here, and the wads. Nice and precise to finish. <laughs> Zeppa threw away the Phantom because he didn't want to give it to them, and they can't find it. <laughs> they, haven't, they haven't kept the Phantom into the round. That's great from Zeppa. I don't know where he hid it. What's he done, put it under the tree or yeah, something? I'm not sure. <laughs> where did Tossed it go? Into the corner. Where did that gun go? Nice idea there towards the end in a, in a fairly unwinnable spot. This, go. But the stun does look quite good in that situation. Where did the phantom go? Where, where's he throwing it? Oh, oh in just corner. into the corner. Just in a blind spot. That's why they couldn't find it. <laughs> All right, we're back in though in the tiles oh, crunch. it's rapid. Yeah, tiles crunch on the cards and already finding value. One more player left to hunt out, sniff out Moose. Not long for this world. It's the deck there. So does Icy. He's going to be found. Cloud9 making sure that they slow this one, temper around in a moment. Hold down to that mid control that they just gained. They do still have a player disadvantage. The bonus round idea from G2. So far working out, but it's about how you stick the landing. It's one of the most classic plays that you could possibly go for on a defensive bonus round yeah. as well. I think something the C9 should have been expecting and had a protocol for. But we were following the Phantom, so we missed it a little bit at the beginning. <laughs> But I'm glad we solved the mystery. Jonah P. 
He's took through. That's an underhanded flash, I believe, just to get them in. And Vanity just hops onto the head of Jonah P. Back of the site, anchoring Fallon. A lot to be asked of him now. Drops down and he hears that. Knows that Rooney's going to be approaching him. That is absurd. Three bullets left. Not enough to finish him, but Rooney surely doesn't win this one. 1v2. Overhanded, long range with the artillery. Shocky nice sent recon. flying. Recon. Nice recon. His beautiful spam. Damage doesn't come through. 25 seconds left. Can't afford to slow this down. Another tap and run back. Four bullets. A couple of spams. Exchange of the weaponry for even less bullets. How does he play this? Once more, doubled up. G2 side by side. Doesn't expect them to be coming from that position. A big round for G2 to get on board. They've won both pistols. Failed to capitalize on the bonus in the first half, but here they get that tiles crunch working to perfection. Set themselves up with an enormous advantage. Yeah, that full blind straight into Oxy. And Oxy's in a really committed position there, not using his cloudburst to hide inside. I think that's a, a pretty big error, to be honest. You've got to be set up to deal with the tiles crunch in those kind of positions. And, and as a jet, just smoke your feet. Smoke yeah. your feet, play inside of them. You know you're going to get hit by some kind of flash. Didn't quite have the protocol ready and set there to go. And I think that's one of the big differences between these two teams. G2 have got set plays and ideas heavily drilled into them. They focus on the discipline, the core. You know, almost what the desk was asking earlier, is game sense better than mechanics? <laughs> or more important than mechanics? I think, you know, G2 are definitely the game sense, discipline, prep, and making sure everybody's on the same page kind of team. Yeah. To, to make sure that the roster is more than the sum of its parts. And C9 a little more loose with it, a little more happy to go in with audible calls and leave things for Vanity and Oxy to feel out the round. So not too much really, I think on the other end of the timeouts were just, uh, you haven't seen too much, only the pistol round of the bonus that goes wrong. Yeah. Timeout's still called though for Cloud9. They're on a Stinger purchase. Yeah, and this is the brutal part of being hit by a set strat like that that works, yeah. is that you actually don't have too much to even modify. You know, you can you can talk to each other about how to stop another Tars Crunch from happening, but G2 is certainly not going to do it on this round. Probably not going to do it for the rest of the half. But maybe we'll see it one more time. Nice on Rapid, though, from Oxy. Injection of pace. Down to clear out towards Market. I'm taking out the position. Jonah P almost with a punish, he's dropped onto one HP in a paranoia. Oh, Valin covers it. Well, and Kai now with the damage done. Look at this. Bullets firing forwards and true. Nicely done with the jump spot. I see. That's really Clean good. with the movement. Stun. Forwards, they got to know what his last few players are. Spikes picked back up. There's no real escaping from this one. G2 are eager to hunt down the remaining players. Look at the discipline again. Yeah, doesn't overstep so it with the swing. It's so good. Every single time that G2 peaked there, they had another player ready to either distract for a wide swing or to double face yeah. or to trade. It's always really well coordinated from the G2 squad. I mean, look at that. Swinging in as Jonah P swings out. Icy then comes over to support Valen. And then as Lee presses forward, he's got someone with him as well. Really lovely done. Just like that, going up to 8 to 8. G2. More than back in it for the map itself. It's a team that they've been together as a core, this roster, for a long, long time. But honestly, the international experience that they've now acquired, strength to strength. Played that many matches recently. C9 have been struggling with the attack side on this map from what I can remember. It's been one where, obviously, it's difficult for any team, but I think it favors having some really set ideas so that eventually a couple of them break through and you can get some attack rounds going. Trying to try and set up Oxy here. Yeah, it's non-committal. It's just looking for picks. And no one's facing. Yeah. These were the spots in the previous match where G2 completely shut down Oxy. They didn't offer him any opportunities. They forced him to overextend, and then they shut him down by double-facing him and having great utility. On the attack side, he had like a 0.6 rating. Really rough. Paranoia, a lot of no utility going to be expended here, but it's just one stun that stops them. Icy has to reposition from the Hunter's Fury. Right into the open arms of these Cloud9 players, and they are tackling the side. Well enough. Seconds left. 
Line forwards, Valen still alive, tucked towards the corner, but they know where he is. His position was noted just from earlier. Top of the plant, up forwards, Trent trying to take the forward position, but it's Cloud9 who overwhelm it. Great stabilizing round from Cloud9. Able to get in off the back of Rooney's ultimate. That's been a key point of coordination for Cloud9 today. They were good with it on the defense side as well. Making sure that they use the pressure that it applies. You know, forcing IC to be isolated in that spot. And keeping Valen to only one in his anchor position. The economy for G2, though, is still looking fairly good, so... Yeah, still able to get the buy together. Yeah, we're gonna get some rifle rounds. Valen caught by that. Yeah. Yeah, it makes it feel like he could be in wine, though. Same game plan from Cloud9, though. Not that big control, they just pre fire the alarm bot. This setup is such classic G2. Trent makes it feel like it's only him covering market in the hopes that you don't clear the hard left position and Leaf gets freebies. How often was this working at Shanghai? It felt like it was constant. Trying to be holding for that long range flash, although it's not going to be using it anytime soon. Might go for a reclear. Yeah, they do. Oxy Joe biding his time, holds close to the corner, so not being caught by it. Drone only spot in one, that was Moose. Doesn't reveal away too much. Jump spot might though. They see Oxy into mid and now it's pretty evident. It's gonna be that B split. The anchoring player is gonna be put under a tremendous amount of fire. G2, question is, how does Leaf really tackle it? Anybody watching for this one? Oh, jumping around. It's a little bit messy still. Lands two. The rest of his team now ready to support. Reinforcements arriving into the fray. And tuck, tuck, tight to the corner. Rooney once more. Last one left to stand against it. It's an onslaught that G2 are delivering here. It's going to be that 9-9. Even up scoreline once more. I'm out of here. Oh, the look on Vanity's face as he runs into the smoke and sees Leaf whoa, whoa, in there. It's who, Leaf? Yeah. Really? <laughs> You've betrayed me and gone to the other side, and now you're <laughs> ruining me and Zephyr. I mean, the spam as well through onto Moose. Yeah, the, the information that you pointed out in the round, though, they got the read on where that was headed. It was a nice idea from C9 to try to deny as much info as they could, make sure it was Moose breaking the drone, but dropped back into those defensive setups, and Valen had time to throw the smoke perfectly there. One suppressed. Trent without the Odin, so it is a bit easier for C9 to get in. Don't flash the punishing case. Somebody was holding close to main. Wow, okay, so a fake teleport there from Valen. He's in wine, and they've made it feel like they panicked and reinforced B, perhaps hoping that that would indicate, all right, let's rush into A. They've overstacked the B site by accident, and then Valen would be able to snack on them from wine. But that's not the case, C9. Don't take the bait. They don't know exactly where the omen is, but... He's got to be somewhere past, past the line of scrimmage. It's Cloud9 going for a fake now. No command is going to be using to be main. Spike's nowhere near. All intentions going to be heading over towards the A site, and G2 have a full read on this. Not enough util, or not enough of a sell from Cloud9. Nobody's shifted the position. Valen straight back into wine, holding the close quarter angle. And it gets a little bit messy now. You should run. Locked down, Valen, forced to peek, it is weird, and they know he's there. 30 seconds left. They think an indicator, at least. <gasps> Turning away, precisely the wrong time there from Vanity. He's still going to be covered and traded by Moose, but the lockdown for a lockdown. Trent, go and walk about and finds just a wandering Oxy. Yeah, uh, this is a weird one. Oxy was hoping that the B site was clear and he could give that info to his team, and now, I mean, this is just a save. save. Yeah. This is 10 seconds 10 on the seconds clock. Left. All of Cloud9's ideas have come to North. The fake left Oxy inserted on the B side of the map, and it was supposed to be plan B. Maybe even plan C, I suppose. If, <laughs> yeah. Maybe if the fake had worked, that would be like plan A. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the, Oxy's, Oxy's cool. over inserted onto B, and he just missed the timing on Trent. Trent's got really good awareness that that could be a possibility. None of the fast knife out rotating, exposing himself to angles. Yeah. So very solid, and Cloud9 are forced to take a timeout because they've only won one round so far in this half. And this is where the fact that the map is so defense-sided, you get these enormous swings in momentum. Yeah. The, the pistol rounds end up being massive, just so that you can get uh, the economy under your feet and get some cheaper rounds on the yeah, attack of course, side. I mean, G2 winning the pistol and the bonus. 
Yeah. It's, and both um, pistols. Yeah. And it wasn't the healthiest bonus win in, in the world. You know, you remember the Phantom getting tossed away, <laughs> but but it's still, you know, you, yeah. you keep the bank building. And, and you uh, suppress your opponents. Exactly. And G2's money has been very nice so far. I've been able to get gun rounds into almost all of it. So time out. I think one, one of the big things that C9 can think about here a little is that they've run quite a lot of anti-Odin setups. They've been going for flash recon plays, trying to catch on to Trent, and Trent actually hasn't been running the Odin. So, in theory, you can just walk up B and try to do some executes where Oxy gets put into spots uh, a little more easily. You can try to save more utility so that you have some for the post plan. Oh, there's always a danger that Trent might pick it up, and he has gone for it here. But this one is going to be the flash recon. Yeah, a bit of Odin spam. Yeah, Odin spam through these tiles, doors. Players might be there to meet Walls. him. Yeah. We'll see if it finds some value. It looks like it might. I mean, this is where Oxy oh, wants to Oh, wait a burst. second. Here we go. Blinds it up. Does Cloudburst out towards the feet there. Not going to be spotted, but again, it does the work. It's a classic play. Yeah. Oxy Cloudburst forwards, and so the rest of his team can't hide inside of it. Play Soul has to be committed, at least one of the blades for it. Again, G2 assuming the anchoring positions, defensive in nature. And a swarm is dead at a cross. Drone has to be broken. Oxy, it's a flash peek into the spawn stun. Not enough to slow him down, but there is that trade anyway. So some of those players now linking back up G2. The crossfire here. Pause being caught by Cloud9, but again, they want to try and fight this one, and it might be a missed call. Miss Tell as well. Not too sure what Utah they had really available for that. Revealing area. Potentially misfired. Another face though, doubled up together, Spike forcing down. it to a 1v2. Rooney spam through, maybe just a shoulder peeking through. If the double peek doesn't work the first time, we'll do it again. Try it again. <laughs> yeah. When C9 cut noise like that, G2 were worried. Be walking into sight, taking timings. They don't want that to be split up into a series of 1v1s. And this is a really common set play that we're seeing, and they're working. And I think that's a bit worrying for Cloud9, because it's not like G2 are bringing out anything new. New ideas, yeah. Yeah, new, bizarre, to catch you off guard. C9 should actually have some awareness that these plays in round 15, round 20 are really standard on Ascent, and they're getting caught by them and losing very important rounds as a result. Two Guardians and a Bulldog now for C9. G2 running away with it. Getting into desperate territory. Not too much variation to the attack side game plan of Cloud9. Again, it's a lot of just mid pressure, make sure that they remove the alarm bot and looking for picks, but Oxy has not got anything from this. Nobody has given him a sight line or a fight to take. Oh, potential for a refight here into A main. They hear it. Vanity jump spot. Stunned. Paranoia, blind. Let's get the connection. Blind. Yeah, I see. What's blinded up? Again, another follow up. Oh, nice. Util. It's relentless right now from G2, and they're finding all sorts of possibilities across the map. Sight gained, at least for the front section of it, but main control. Swapped around here. Don't know how Leaf got into that spot. Crossing away, Rooney. Nice one. Magnetic straight to the dome. JP is going to be dropped into the crossover. I still have control of this. Leaf. <laughs> Need to clear out Rooney. They're aware that he's got himself looked deep up into the market angle. He's going to be a bit of a nuisance. And with him dealt with, now full attention and focus can be placed onto the site. Still, Zeppa does claim one. 45 health to his name. Doubled up now into the high-low angle. Anybody who tries to take a step. Valen forwards. Just cleans both of them up. Well, that shouldn't be happening. Monstrous play from the IGL of G2. That's a high load he's going up against. He's been so good this year, hasn't he? Yeah. He's just constantly delivering for his team. The calling has been immaculate, but also individually putting on a, a show. Up at the top of the scoreboard alongside Lee. And yeah, this, this play, go, go, go. two layers to it, so that the paranoia from Vanity on target. cannot stop everything that's happening. For C9, I think Oxy's got to realize they're scared of me. You know, they're playing so so disciplined around the map. I'm not getting my picks that I'm used to over towards yeah. market. So let's take another step forward. I think Oxy needs to find that confidence to just contact in a little deeper than he usually would to try to find G2. But it's tough. You don't want to run into crossfires. You really don't. And G2 is so good at setting that level of play up. 
was their game plan. Last time they played against Cloud9 as Whoa. well. Stun is that is nice. Perfect with the placement. Stun off the alarm bot and then double swing. Yeah, cool setup. They've definitely put the time into finding out how to get the value from Neon, even though you can't op. And plays like that are going to make Oxy a little more concerned about just walking into spots. But I, I think it's necessary. I think there really doesn't seem like another win con here for C9. They're going to send the exec. Needs to be a round win. It's Cloud9's hopes for this map. It's Windling. Oxy lurking underhanded with the flash as well. Dominating this angle. Jonah P. Not to be removed. Musto biding his time. Waiting it out. And we'll get the punish in time. Out through heaven once more. Valen a little bit messy with it. But Vanity beautiful with the shooting. A knife out. Leaf caught. Ahead. Trying to have a little bit too much to do, and I think he realizes it himself, maybe. Possibly there with a spam kill, yeah. He'd have to get very fortunate to win this. And one. he's already being pushed and pressured. So, kind of staying alive in the map. Yeah, and quite a nice idea. Like yeah. I was saying, contacting around the map, I think, is going to be really useful here because you're not running into an operator and G2 are holding very disciplined positions. This time, it's double contact. It looks a little silly here from Oxy, but when Oxy dies, they don't expect there to be another portion of this. And Jonah P, a very free kill for Moose. And the reason that it didn't feel like a full A split is because Oxy isn't making a ton of noise. He's contacting and it makes it feel like he was just a backstabber. So I think they can run some ideas like that. He doesn't necessarily have to be the, the lurk backstab, but I think he can try to push things a little further, and his team needs him to. G2 have been so excellent at keeping Oxy to just being a regular good player, where when you see Cloud9 play against other teams, Oxy looks like a superstar. He dominates. Yeah, he absolutely dominates. <laughs> and even when Oxy's shut down, he's not bad. He's at the top of the scoreboard now, 18 and 17. You know, one of the only players who's uh, positive for C9, but yeah. he, it's not he's not finding those opportunities on attack to dominate the game and open things up. But two rounds gained basically equals things that G2 got on their attack side, except G2 also won the pistol. Yeah. That's all that really separates the two teams so far. That's still only one more round is all it will take for D2. Yeah, it does feel very, very even though. The problem is, it's even and G2 are a step away from the finish line. Full group up from Cloud9. That was spread default. Have another sword. Looks like they just want to go straight into an A exec. There is only going to be the one player waiting for them. It's a Hunter's Fury to set this one up. Valen going to be feeling the heat here, still tucked into the position. Never to actually clear him out, and surely doesn't get away with this one. A kill to be found, finally traded. Oxy moves him from the fight. With Icy offing, this retake's going to be made more difficult, but it does have the ult. He's got the ult, he's got the stun. They're missing Paranoia, that's the big one. And also a smoke for A-Main or the spike. Finally getting planted. I mean, playing offside here. That. Shadows traveling. Feels like it'll be really good in the post. And the ult offloaded into the hands. Let's see it electrifying in nature. I see spamming away. No easy fight's gonna be given to them right now. Cloud9 are making sure that they play this so damn patiently. It's beautiful work from Oxy. Just weaves backwards and forwards away from the Jenny. A little bit of a tap and a damage and a dash reposition. Is so damn smart. A face by Rooney finishes it. 11th round. One more to drag it to OT. Great decision there from C9. They come out of the timeout straight into an A exec. I don't know whether that was a hard read based on something that I've missed, but they found a, a pretty much free site. It was only Valin up at the top and they traded him out with it. was you or Great little shot from Oxy, who also grabbed three. Broken by for round 24 for G2. This looks suddenly so doable for Cloud9. Yeah. Instant change of fortunes. They go online too. They just want to run it back. All grouped up onto A. This time with a lockdown. They can null command as well. You should run. Yeah, with that ult. I mean, you can just wait that out. Burnt up. Lockdown. There's a deep knife as well. It's going to be set across. Four players tagged. This time, obvious. Yeah. The one thing that they've got to be aware of here is that the retake's going to be coming through with an ult command from Jonah P. Is. Have they got a plan for that? Oxy. Someone who wants to take the fight entertainment. Oh. Nobody covering Valance position. 
The kill found for it. He even expects it. The second go of things. Icy this time winning it out. 4v4. No utility available here for C9. No paranoia. Never going out. Now just getting it back. Yeah. I think the nade as well to try and delay. It's a shot time. It finds it. They're all just caught into this corner. In the section of hell, only the one player to bail them out, and that's Moose playing from the main angle. He needs to get value, needs to get kills, but there's a lot to be asked of him right now in this spot. Smokes spammed onto the angles. The appropriate positions all known and noted, and everybody falling. Leave it to just one. Already broken. The final shot does it there. 13 to 11. Defenders win. Good closeout from G2. Really well done. All of the patience paying off for them. Very good coordination on how they swung out through heaven there. Uh, just mirrored it all throughout the map. Yeah. Having said that, super close still. I think the entire map basically came down to the fact that G2 won both pistols and C9 fumbled a little bit at dealing with those defensive set plays. They lost two very crucial rounds to the Tiles Crunch. And then also that kind of flash recon spam play from Catwalk. I definitely agree. I mean, you can tell this is a Cloud9 team that just hasn't been Resting on the laurels of the 5-1 standing so far. They've made definitive improvements while a lot of the teams have been in Shanghai improving themselves, you know. And a lot of those matches. We're going to be stepping away up next. Golden Boy and the Alice Desk will be breaking it all down for map number one. So don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss it. Red Bull gives you wings. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin. In this series, I'm going to walk you through Attack on Pearl. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. Bye.